While roaming through an art gallery, you are well aware of the paintings on the wall. However, in film, paintings are typically inconsequential background elements. But what if we gave the same consideration to paintings and films as we do paintings in an art gallery? I now begin our tour of... Within the mise-en-scene of this shot, the painting parallel to Holly reads so pure. At this point in the film, this is exactly what Holly was. She was a typical 15-year-old girl, in high school, living in South Dakota, who had just met a boy. This painting acts as a description, a museum label, so to speak, on Holly's identity. The painting of an angel in this medium shot embodies Holly's childhood innocence. It must be associated to Holly because the painting is only revealed once Holly enters the scene. The framing of the shot also uses the rule of thirds, so the viewer's eyes are naturally drawn to the painting. This emphasizes that this is not just a prop piece in the mise-en-scene, but a metaphor crucial to understanding Holly as a character. Now let's take a brisk stroll through Malik's art exhibit until we see this painting again. Wait, did you hear that? That's the sound of a childhood being lost, ladies and gentlemen. Kit murdering Holly's father is the catalyst which sets in motion the seriousness of events Holly will endure throughout the rest of the film. When we next see the painting is during the sequence where Holly's house is burned down. Holly has been launched into her new destructive life and we watch as this painting burns away, as Holly's childhood and innocence burns away with no hope of being recreated out of the ashes. During the sequence where Kit and Holly invite themselves into a wealthy man's home, there is a pan across a dark painting depicting three people looking upon a dead white bird whose heads and wings are stained red. Backtracking our steps through this exhibition, we must compare this painting to a painting shown in the moments before Holly's father was killed. In the foreground of the shot is Holly, and in the background is a painting of a child holding white flowers with a white bird on its shoulder. Considering the events that occurred between the shots of these two paintings, Holly's life went to one distinguished by white, goodness, to one distinguished by black, darkness. Holly. As I stated earlier in our tour, the climactic point of this art exhibit is when Kit shot Holly's father. In the back end of this scene is a painting of a person lying down with another person kneeling next to them, a mirror image to Holly's actions during her father's death. This painting is physically carried with the characters as they enter into their new lives. The weight of Holly's father's death is metaphorically carried with these characters as they enter into their new lives. This death constantly remains a presence over these characters' heads, as seen quite literally in this pan of Holly and Kit's tree house. Yet Holly never grieves this death. Instead, she develops an insensitivity to death. She talks to each of the individuals Kit has trapped, is unfazed when Kit shoots someone, and seems unaffected by her dehumanizing environment. This painting acts as a reminder of the events which sets in motion Holly's dehumanization. Perhaps the most intriguing piece in this exhibit is what appears to be a continuity error. During the burning of the house sequence, we obtain this long shot of Holly's bedroom. On the left side of the shot, we see a painting of a child in red showing an object to a child in blue, but the painting quickly burns away. In the establishing shot of this film, we see Holly playing in this same bedroom, however there is no painting on the wall. Where did this painting come from and why is it important? In the sequence immediately following Holly's father's death, Holly watches omnipresently as a child in red shows an object to a child in blue, a mirror image of the painting that is later burned away. The addition of this painting may look like a mistake, but it represents Holly's conscious acknowledgement of what she has lost and left behind, her family her childhood, and her innocence. To wrap up our tour, the paintings in this film's mise-en-scene describe to us who Holly was, what Holly embodied, what Holly did, what Holly becomes, and what Holly ultimately lost. We only get one childhood, and if it burned away, we may never get it back, just like a painting cannot be reconstructed out of its own ashes. Destruction is permanent, and a gap will always remain within this part of Holly's life. A gap will always remain in every child who lived a childhoodless life.